from Idafel Lake by in the interior mountains of British Columbia. We're about 40 kilometers east of Kelowna, where today it's man and woman against machine and nature. The drivers here today are literally putting their skills on ice in the Hancock Ice Challenge 92. is these people want to be here. Is this fun or what? Oh, this is wonderful fun. <laughs> We're going to go out there and have some more fun. Right, Ron? Yes, sir. They are thrill seekers. Clouds of snow, they spit ice and spin their way around hairpin turns. Most of us shiver at the thought of having to drive in conditions like these, but not the drivers here today. Does this racing differ from the kind of racing we see all the time on on TSN and other programs? Well, I think uh, you probably talk to most of the competitors, and they tell you this is a lot more fun. It's a little slower speed, but just as exciting, just as sideways, just as much racing uh, men to defend their bump and bump. This is a racetrack like you've never seen before. The atmosphere around here is very casual. And when's the last time you've seen cars racing on solid ice? Beneath me, there's about a hundred feet of water. Of course, the primary concern is, is the ice thick enough? Fishermen down the way say it's about 12 inches thick, so I think we're okay today. This idea of racing cars on ice has been popular in Europe for years, but it's just beginning to catch on in Canada. When we come back, we'll tell you why it is, and we'll take you inside for a ride around the course. back to the Handbook Ice Challenge 92 from Idabel Lake near Kelowna. Mention car racing and one usually thinks expensive. That's one of the most interesting things about this sport. It's not expensive and that's why it's growing in popularity. So how do you cut down the, the cost of this racing? It's still, I mean, it looks cheap but there's certainly got to be costs involved and how do you uh, economize? Well, it's very tough. One thing with the series, of course, the, the car itself becomes a, a low-cost item as opposed to a high-cost item. And what we've done is, once again, provide tires that don't cost the race of the fortune to buy. And it's limited stuff. You know, it's very modern. It's a very good racing car. Another interesting side to this race is that it's for drivers of all ages, men and women. Note car 26 sweeping around for the final lap. Car 48 closing in from behind. This, as it turns out, is a battle for second last spot. And neither driver seems overly concerned about finishing at the back of the pack. 26 and 48, the two that were battling out for oh. final position. <laughs> Great. How did you do? Oh, actually, she got me in the corner the last lap, so which is unfortunate because I slowed down a little too much. We almost tagged, so... We didn't do that, thank goodness. <laughs> An invigorating afternoon? Oh, yeah, definitely invigorating. Not your Sunday afternoon uh, drive, usually. Well, you never know, especially those streets right now. <laughs> you were driving 26, right? Yes, I was. It, was a, it was a battle for last place. I noticed that. Second to Yeah, second to last. <laughs> well, whatever. So how, do, how, how did you think you did? Oh, okay. I uh, should have been there for the first pace lap. I was indisposed at the time. Right. But, uh, no, it was fun. You're driving 48 next. Next. Is that right? Yes. Now, there's, uh, there's a, a race that uh, you think you'll do well I in, or? Close, I, got, I have got my own system of, it, of, of driving out there. Is when somebody comes up, they're supposed to go back. These events often turn into some sort of a family outing. But you know, not only are the novice drivers here, so are the pros. Ross Bentley, an Indy car racer, he's here, and he took us for a ride in his car. Okay, if we turn, turn into turn one here, one of the tricks with ice racing, it's the same as driving an Indy car or, uh, or anything else. The trick is really to be as smooth as you can and try to get the power down. These tank hoop tires are amazing how well they put the power down even on a glare ice like this. 
this series has got to be one of the most fun forms of racing that you can ever do. Certainly not as serious as an IndyCar, but it's really good training. Again, you gotta be you gotta be smooth just like as if you were driving an Indy car or any other kind of race car. So it teaches you an awful lot about car control. One of the tricks is getting the car set up before the corner and then getting it into a good slide all the way through. Coming up to the, the fastest part of the track, which is a big long left-hand sweeper, basically take a flat out in third gear at about a 45 degree angle to the to the track all the way through almost looking out the side window to see where we're going. It's great fun. If you can control one of these things lap after lap, I tell you, you can drive practically anything. Getting the car set up, braking it before each corner, accelerating out of the corner, again, trying to feel for the traction, up into third gear. Accelerating hard now, along through the back sweeper here. Getting the car set up. Playing with the throttle a little bit, then hard back on the throttle. Keeping the car in a nice smooth 45 degree switch angle all the way through, nice slide. But again, trying to keep it smooth so you can keep the traction. Down the back straight, start braking, getting set up. You almost get the car pitched at a bit of an angle, entering the corner, braking, down into second gear. Let the car rotate around, heading for the apex of the inside part of the corner. Trying to get the power on, trying to be as smooth as you can coming out of the corner, accelerating up, and back up into third gear. Not a better feeling than driving a car sideways. And back into pit lane. Indeed, not a better feeling than driving a car sideways. In fact, this is about one of the few times you'll see them going straight, and that's at the run-up to the start of the next race. Inside car number three, we can see that the driver can't see, at least not very well. Visibility is often reduced by flying snow. Oops. Notice how the bumpers did not lock when those two cars bumped together back there. Later, we'll show you why that is. For now, the race continues. This S-turn has been giving drivers trouble all day. It's a tricky one because no sooner does the driver crank the steering wheel over to one side, get the skid settled down, than he has to crank it completely around to the other side and reestablish his skid. It's a tough one, and it's been giving problems to drivers throughout the day. Series leader Ian Payne driving car number two is hanging onto the lead position in this race, and he's doing it by keeping full power as he slides into the turns. car 10 losing it in that same S turn. See, that's one of the thrills of the sport. Snow is soft, and when the driver goes out of control on an open lake, there's nothing to hit, except, of course, other cars, and they're all going in the same direction anyway. Ian Payne, car number two, and halfway through the day, Ian Payne takes first place in this race. We'll return to the Hancock Ice Challenge 92 in a moment. And welcome back to Ida Bell Lake near Kelowna, British Columbia, where we're watching the Hancock Ice Challenge 1992. And joining me is a former Canadian ice racing champion, Andy Field. Andy, what are the rules in this sport? How does one go about winning the championship? Well, the most, as in most forms of racing, Ted, the important thing is smoothness. And uh, particularly in ice racing, smoothness is the key to success. The transition from oversteer to understeer, which means a front wheel skid or a rear wheel skid, you've got to be so careful what that car is doing. So you're on the edge of traction all the time. I'm, I'm sure most people who have driven on ice know how scary it can be to, to get into a slide with a car. Well, here you're doing it all the time. 
you're purposely trying to do it. So you want to stay right on the edge, really smoothly. And as you go around one of these curves, do you keep accelerating all the time? Is that the whole idea, is to pick well, up speed in the corners? Yeah, well, the, the throttle, the accelerator pedal is, the, is, once again, one of the keys in applying it smoothly is, is, is very important. You are applying it, but you don't push down on the throttle. You just ease into it and ease off it. What about the point structure? We're seeing a series of races here today. How does it all come to a conclusion at the end of the season? Well, points are added up. You have six heats, six races per day. And obviously, you pick up points for finishing first, second, or third, more than you do finishing further fast. So it's important uh, to continuously do well. In other words, consistency is really important uh, and on the ice and in each and every race. So it's much like the Grand Prix circuit. No? Exactly. Thank you, Andy Field. The point system gives drivers plenty of opportunity to be competitive, but ultimately, it's driving skill alone that will produce a champion. notice by now that most of these cars are strikingly similar. Most here today are Chevettes, and driver Case Neerup gave us a tour of his. What makes this car any different from a Chevette we'd see on the street? Well, we, we make some extra safety, uh, we take some extra safety precautions and we try and make it easier to drive. Like what? Okay, obviously, if we take a look inside, uh, I bolted in a little uh, smaller steering wheel and with a little bit better grip so that on I basically feel like I'm in more control, and it, it reacts a little bit faster being a smaller wheel, okay? You changed so the steering wheel. I changed the steering wheel. Um, I got, obviously, the bucket seat in here that makes me a lot uh, more stuck in the seat. I don't move around as much. You don't have to worry about that. And on top of which, uh, we use a, a six-point harness, like a seat belt, so it's a very quick release, and it's got two over the shoulders. So I'm, I'm all buckled in. I really can't go anywhere. Right. Um, I've got the helmet, of course, which we all have to wear, and then there's the roll bar. Uh, in, the, in the event of a, a rollover, obviously we don't want the roof coming down. So we got that. It's all mandatory. Uh, the seat isn't, but the roll bar is. And we put the, you, you obviously have studs here. Yeah, we are running on studded tires. They're so the hand-cooked uh, winter tires. And we put the, the regular street studs in. They're 16 millimeter street studs, so any car on the road would use these studs if they use studs. Uh, the next modification would be the wheel nut, where we use a bigger size because of the pressure that does come on the wheel. Okay, this, this is the bumper guard. We have to run the stock bumper, so by having this guard, if, just imagine the back end of another car has the same little thing hanging out the back that they hook, and we call it bumper hooking, and by having this guard, having it on every car, they manage, they guide each other, pass each other, so we don't, we don't end up struggling. What's under the hood? Well, under the hood is very exciting. <laughs> Chevette engine, Ooh. which is, again, absolutely dead stock. Uh, we can't modify anything. We can uh, uh, clean up the floor a little bit by 20 thou, and we can mill the head a little bit by 10 thou just to clean it up, but that's it. In our series, we have to run a single barrel, so everybody has the same mono jet carburetor on there. What's better than have a very economical competitive racing series that's three wheel drive and lots of excitement and lots of fun. Great. The vets are lining up for another race. Ice conditions are perfect. That's Ross Bentley in car 14. Next to him in car 55 is Murray Greaves. Now he has never won a race. Could this be the one? We'll have to wait and see. So as they come at you, it's Bentley on your right Greaves on your left. Away they go. On the plus side, Greaves is in the pole position, but on the downside, he's up against an Indy car racer in the likes of Bentley, who's also at the front of the pack in this race. Coming around that critical first turn, both take it well. of pole position is that when cars are all bunched up like this at the beginning of a race, drivers further back can lose a lot of ground if someone spins out in the middle. After the first lap, Greaves has pulled away and is comfortably in the lead now, but he has at least nine more laps to go.
and there's a spin out. Case Nearup sees it from inside his car, but can't do much about it. Here, all he can hope for is a good bounce and keep going. Reeves still up front, driving nicely around that S turn, holding it, holding it perfectly. Steering nicely into the skid. Round he goes. And not far behind the rest of the pack. That's twice the yellow car has been sandwiched in this race. But all of this is far behind Greaves now as he sits comfortably up front. Reeves steering nicely, not losing control. Perfect visibility. And Case Nearup, car number three, on his tail, but some ways back. Last lap. And it doesn't look like anyone is going to catch Greaves. He's sliding for home. And still, that's Case Nearup, car number three, on his tail, but I don't think he'll have enough time to catch him. And Murray Greaves wins his first ever Hancock Ice Challenge. The ice may have started off 12 inches thick here, but by late in the afternoon after that last race, take a look at this. After all the stud gouging in this corner of the track, the ice is perhaps thinned down to maybe 8 or 9 inches. You're watching the Hancock Ice Challenge for 1992. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Hancock Ice Challenge 92. Time to do battle, the sixth and final race of the day. Uh, this is the last race of the day. How do you feel about it? Well, I'm doing better in the afternoon than I did in the morning. But uh, what can you do? You just take a look at yep. How did you score pole position here? Well, my partner actually uh, managed to finish in uh, ninth place on the last race. We invert the first half of our grid in the first 10 cars. I don't know whether it's lucky or not that I'm now uh, on the pole. Mind you, i got to start all the way back because I did make it as far to the front as I did, but it's supposed to be back into the level. And the last, time the you were, last time you were seven back and you managed to finish second, so you can do it. Yeah, we can do it. As the cars go through the warm-up lap in preparation for this last race of the day, we can tell you that so far today, there have been five races and we've had five different winners. As we saw in the last contest, Murray Greaves won his first ever, also taking the checkered flag for the first time in their ice racing careers were Doug Bailey and George Ross, both winners here today. Okay, we're set to go as they come around for the final stretch in the warm-up. Here's a look from inside car number three. And there's the flag. Early on, it's car 47, driven by Roger Edgar in the lead as he heads into the back stretch. Followed closely, though, by car zero, and that has Bob Brown behind the wheel. Case near up inside car number three, somewhere in the pack. Edgar up front, Brown in second position. But in the first lap, Brown is cutting on the inside and takes Edgar out of the lead. Brown now in the lead. Edgar in second place, and everybody else following around the corner as they head in for the second lap around the back stretch. Nearup is well back, trying to find a hole in the traffic. Things are looking a little thick back there, and he may not be able to break out of the pack. giving no room for Edgar to retake the lead. And Nearup just trying to find a hole as everybody stays tightly knit in this sixth and final race today here at Idabel Lake in the Okanagan. Notice the wipers are turned off on the lead couple of cars here. 
no visibility problems for them, and that is one of the big advantages of staying up front. Well into the race now, and Brown continues to hold the lead, now putting some distance between himself and the rest of the field. And as we mentioned earlier, once up front, it's very difficult for the rest of the pack to catch him. Brown holding, holding the lead by showing fine form in the curves, not swinging too widely, accelerating all the way through, keeping it smooth. Edgar still in position number two, trying to catch up. on these straightaways where they can make some ground, sometimes getting speeds of up to 120 kilometers an hour. Well, Brown continues, continues his lead, driving smoothly. There could be a fight for second and third position growing here. There's Edgar in second position, and he's being tailed closely. Edgar in the yellow car. As Brown goes down the back stretch, still in first place. There is a battle for second place taking place. There's Edgar in the yellow car. He seems to have a precarious hold in the number two position. He's swinging a little too wide in this turn, and Payne, Payne in car number two, sees the opportunity, and he's going for it. Look at Ian Payne overtake Edgar in this turn. Edgar swung too wide, and Payne caught him. That little shove bumps Edgar down into third position, and Ian Payne, one of the top three drivers on the circuit this year, is heading for a number two finish. If he hangs on to that position, that'll give him enough points to be a contender for finishing the season first overall. Brown in car zero keeps his comfortable lead. And Payne is not letting Edgar get back into second position. Round the go. And Payne, number two, swings in nice and tight. Edgar loses it a bit there and loses further ground and drops just a bit further back of Payne and still in third position with Brown up front in car number zero. Brown first. Payne second, turning nicely. And Edgar trying to make ground, but can't. Final lap now. Brown in first place, hanging on. And it looks like that's the way it's going to finish. Brown in first place. As long as he maintains control through this final lap. Taking no chances, keeping it steady. Picking it up on the back stretch. Ian Payne, car number two, doing the same, giving no room for Edgar to regain position number two. After a long day, six races all together, here are the three who lead the standings. In the middle of your picture, it's Darren Turner. He leads the pack to his right, Bob Brown, who just won the last race, and way off on the right side of your screen, Ian Payne. And that's how a bunch of people come to an event like this, do a little bit of slipping, a little bit of sliding, and have a whole lot of fun. Thanks very much for joining us for the Hankook Ice Challenge 92. So long for now.
Tonight, TSN delivers much more than just the score.